now, today we're going to be talking about Ayurveda, Ayurvedic medicine, understanding Ayurvedic medicine, and that's my topic. It's a really exciting topic to me. I love it. Uh, who better to talk about Ayurveda with you than someone who's been practicing for uh, 26 or so years? You know, um, <clears throat> my mom's big joke is I started in my last life. <laughs> So who's heard of Ayurveda or Ayurvedic medicine? Just click yes in the comments, I'm curious to know. All right, so let's just start with the basics. Ayurveda, Ayurveda. And let's, let me teach you how to pronounce that. So I, your, very easy, I, your, Veda. Now you can say it. A lot of people have a problem saying that, but it's simple, Veda, means science and ayu ayuhus ayur means life so it's the science of life and it's the complete healing science from india a lot of people think that religion is connected to it it's it's not it's ayurveda is the science of healing science of medicine the science of life um, it's similar to traditional chinese medicine you know how in Chinese medicine, you go to your practitioner and they feel your pulse. They can tell what's happening inside your body. Well, we're the same, same here. I can tell what's happening inside of your body in a myriad of different ways, being a seasoned Ayurveda practitioner that I am. Um, and later on, I'll tell you some of the ways that I can tell what's happening inside of your body. But there are many microcosms that um, us practitioners can utilize to know what's happening. So let me give you a little bit more background with Ayurvedic medicine. Um, so the uh, goals of Ayurveda are, so we want to prevent diseases from occurring. We want to promote longevity and preserve the, the health that we have. So uh, prevent, promote, and preserve. Those are our three buzzwords there. And these are our goals of Ayurveda. Now, some people say, well, what about yoga? Yoga is part of Ayurveda. How does that all work? That's a good question. See, I'm answering your question. By the way, I will take questions, so write them down. What are your questions about Ayurvedic medicine? in the comments. Thank you. Uh, so <clears throat> now, how is Ayurveda different from yoga? So Ayurveda is a big, broad system of healing, and yoga is a small part of it. Now, I mean hatha yoga, the practices, the physical practices, or breathing exercises to control one's own prana, mental exercises to harness your focus. Now, some yoga teachers pick up a little thing and they read a little thing and they, you know, kind of want to start to practice Ayurvedic medicine. Well, my teacher, Dr. Basant Lod, says in order to really be a full and whole yoga teacher and practitioner, we really need to know about Ayurvedic medicine. And the same is true for Ayurveda. In order to be a complete Ayurveda practitioner, you really need to know all about yoga. So now remember, we're talking about the physical Hatha yoga practices, um, not um, other esoteric or religious practices. Okay, so let's come back to this. So Ayurveda, the, we talked a little bit about the goals. Now some people say, I'm answering your questions, by the way. <laughs> Some people say, oh, yeah, Ayurveda is diet. I used to get this a lot. Oh, yeah, it's the diet. Ayurveda, the whole sum of Ayurveda does not equate to diet. In fact, we don't even look at it as diet. We're not thinking about, oh, yes, one goes on a diet when we are new to Ayurveda. But, there, but the premise... One of the major premises is that we are the sum total of what we consume. Think about it. You are the sum total of what you consume. Your impressions affect you. What does that mean, my impressions? Your visual, your auditory, your gustatory. 
all of your, your sensory impressions. We consume impressions. We eat everything that we take in. Hmm. So all that social media all the time and scrolling, 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 swiping left and right, you're consuming that. So Ayurveda is not just diet. Ayurvedic medicine is really a whole lifestyle where we choose our impressions skillfully and where we can utilize our impressions to actually create more balance in the body. You know, I was doing a consultation this morning with a beautiful, beautiful woman and we were, you know, in a, an Ayurveda consultation, we roll up our sleeves and we see what is there, what is actually present in the lifestyle, in these, what are you consuming in all ways? The smells, what are you consuming? Because when we smell something, we're breathing in the particulate. What are you hearing? What are you listening to? What visuals are you watching? What are you reading? What are you looking at? How do you spend most of your time? And people ask me, oh, do I have to change everything or take a whole bunch of supplements, you know, to do an Ayurveda lifestyle? Well, mostly for me as an Ayurveda practitioner, it's about taking out the causes of what's in your lifestyle. Because usually what happens is um, we, we are literally the sum total of what we've done yesterday. That's why I talk about our future and thinking about our health from this perspective, from this bird's eye perspective of your whole entire life. Now, what are a few things that you've done in your past that you know just weren't that good for you? And if you were to go back, you would have changed some things. I know there's a few mistakes that I made. It's really important to apply forgiveness, but also make some positive changes. Yep. But I wanted to give a little bit more history of Ayurvedic medicine. So Ayurveda, pronounced I, your Veda, is the ancient science of life and healing from India. Ayur means life and Veda means wisdom. So it's the science of life or the wisdom of life. And Ayurveda is a seven thousand year old science and in it there's all manner of um, different medicine from um, pediatrics to geriatrics they even had plastic surgery in the ancient ayurvedic texts i could show you some books and they literally had different types of surgery so the ayurveda physicians of the past and i am not one of them i do not do surgery i'm not a medical doctor but I practice Ayurvedic medicine and I have been for about 26 years. So they're, they're, it's a very rich science and um, has roots going back to 7,000 years. And we apply principle of, principles of healing and adjust our lifestyle. And there's many different modalities within Ayurveda. So some of them are food. You know, your diet is in the the food choices that we make, we, we eat three, a lot of us, some of us eat three times a day. And it's a really big way to make positive changes in our lifestyle. So for instance, if you need to create balance in some way, you can choose foods that help you. And frequently, like I was saying earlier, I see folks who actually have a lot of aspects in their diet and in their lifestyle that are the causative factors to their disorder, their disease, or their imbalance. So I'll say that again. A lot of times when people come to me for a consultation with a disorder, a disease, an imbalance, not feeling well, some type of symptom, what we do is roll up our sleeves, look into their lifestyle, and frequently I find the causes right there. So we can make food choices to help create balance. I love that. Other, other um, ways to uh, utilize Ayurveda 
and other modalities are, so there's diet and lifestyle, there's daily and seasonal routine. In another video, I'll talk about dinacharya or daily routine. The even temperature of our food and atmosphere can be a causative factor or help us to heal foods, drinks, the tastes. In Ayurveda, we acknowledge that there are six tastes, sweet, sour, salty, bitter, pungent, and astringent. And each of these six tastes go towards creating something or uh, reducing something. So for instance, most people prefer the sweet taste. Who doesn't have a sweet tooth here? <laughs> so the sweet taste increases the earth element in our body and decreases the air um, element. And I'll talk a little bit more of the five elements and how they are a, uh, we are a composite of those. But right now I wanted to talk a little bit about the different modalities. So food choices, using the tastes to heal, different types of um, body treatments, who's had the shirodara treatment, which is where the oil streams onto your forehead where you're laying down. It's beautiful and quite calming. I've been giving shirodara for many years now and it's just lovely. So there's shirodara, there are different types of Ayurveda massage. Who's had an Ayurveda massage with me? Click the thumbs up. Yeah, there's lots of you. Pancha Karma is our Ayurveda cleansing and rejuvenation program. It is the quintessential cleansing program <laughs> that I've ever heard about. And I've heard about a lot of cleanses. So, and for those of you who do not know me, my name is Darcy Frankel. I'm a cleansing specialist. I've been helping people cleanse for, oh, 26 or so years now. So Pancha Karma is the cleansing program in Ayurveda. And I will talk about um, Pancha Karma at another point. So let's take a look here. A few more of the um, healing elements are um, different practices. Even exercise can help support you, different types of exercise, movement, and stillness practices. Let me take a moment to see what questions we might have. Here's a question, is running good for all body types? That's a good question. So is running good for all body types? Actually, no. Running is not good for all body types. Running is not, running increases vata, it decreases kapha, which we haven't even talked about yet, <laughs> and I'm coming up on. So um, that's the short version of that. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about body type in Ayurveda. So in Ayurvedic medicine, you'll bear with me. I have different, I'm, I'm streaming to different platforms. Thank you. In Ayurvedic medicine, we look at each person as a combination and permutation of the of a few things of the five elements which are space air fire water and earth now traditional chinese medicine utilizes these five elements as well and we are a combination we're a recipe of sorts of space air fire water and earth kind of like you know, this, this beautiful cosmic recipe. Now what happens is the moment that the sperm and egg unite, that creates us, our constitution is created. Now this constitution goes unaltered through our whole life, which is called prakriti. That is our basic constitution or prakriti. Um, prakruti is not the actual pronunciation, just so you know, prakruti um, is. And so when we are in our prakruti, we are completely balanced. In our body, our mind, our emotions, and in our lives. 
But what happens is, let's say we're born and we're born into a very cold, damp, wet, rainy, cloudy climate. And our mother is beautiful and gives us lots of sweets and nurtures us. And, um, uh, and so what happens is, is the sweet taste in, increases the kapha quality or the earth and water. And that increases our kapha. And so then we acquire what is called vikruti. Vikruti is disorder, imbalance. It's a departure from prakruti. And then, so think of it as a transparency. So here's our prakruti. We are our beautiful, peaceful, whole, balanced, aligned, completely healthy, happy, in harmony with everything, all the elements. And then we acquire vikruti or disorder imbalance in one way or another through diet, lifestyle, through breast milk, through environment. And that starts to cover up our prakruti. And this happens layer by layer by layer by layer by layer until sometimes it's hard to even tell what some someone's constitution is. They look completely different than from what they're supposed to look. And this, I see this all the time. People come in to an Ayurveda consultation and they're, you know, they have all these disorders, all these imbalances, pain and sleeplessness, and there's a big coating on their tongue or they're injured or they have digestion, digestive issues. Well, the root source, there are always causative factors. And Ayurveda teaches us that we can create balance. So we're born, we have our original constitution or prakriti, then we get we acquire imbalance, which is called vikriti. And that happens over and over and over until we uh, our body either gets sick and purges that in with in a beautiful instance of um, innate intelligence, or we go see an Ayurveda practitioner, or we get into health, and we just happen to choose the exact lifestyle that is for our prakriti and reduces the vikriti or imbalance. You still with me here? <laughs> I try not to. A lot of times in my videos, I try not to uh, give, you know, too many foreign or complicated terms. I try to really keep it simple for everybody, but you know, there's there comes a point where we just I just really want to make sure that you're getting the information and there's no translatable term for vikruti and, and prakriti, as well as others, such as vata, pitta, and kapha. So the space, air, fire, water, and earth come together and they form the tridoshic complex, which is our body type. So we are this combination and permutation of the five elements. Now the five elements come together to form vata, pitta, and kapha. So vata is comprised of space and air. So you might be thinking, well, how can a human being be made of space and air? <laughs> and that's a great question. There I go, <laughs> feeding you the questions again. I want to hear your questions. Type them in. <laughs> so you're right. We we have to have we this this. I'm sorry to bump my microphone there. This is made of earth and water, and space. Fire. Like the stars. Come on. There's no fire in the body. There is a. There can't be fire in the body. Well, there is and there's space, and there's air, and there's water, and there's earth. You're like, wait, there's no rocks, there's no soil, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's the principle. So let's start from the beginning, okay? So how is earth represented in the physical body? What do you think? How do you think that fire is represented and water in the body? waiting for your comments. <laughs> so earth is represented in the physical body. 
in the form of our hard tissues. Look at what you see. This is, you know, the muscles, the skin, muscles, bones. And actually those, even down to the atomic level, have all five. But the gross matter, so when someone is larger, they are composed of more earth and water. A larger person has more kapha, we say, than vata. Vata is space and air. Space and air exist in the spaces in the joints. There's open spaces in the lungs and in many areas of the body, the colon. And the thing that holds up the pakwashe or the colon is fecal matter. So fire. Okay, Dars, I got you on that. There is no fire in the body. Well, there's the principle of heat. Isn't there now? There's the fire of attention. And there's agni. There's many different forms of agni, which is what I'm naming here. Agni means fire. And we have different types of agni in our body. Agni is to so think of a campfire. You don't just put those huge logs on a campfire. It'll just, <laughs> you need a little kindling, you need a spark, you need to feed it. You need to blow, put air on that in order for that fire to grow. In the same way, if we put big fat logs like huge meals in and don't stoke our Agni with space and air in between our meals, we get heavy and chunky, don't we? <laughs> so the five elements come together in many ways to create what we call the Tridosha or vata pitta kapha vata people are primarily have more much more lively space and air kapha people have more fire and excuse me kapha have more earth and uh, earth and water and waters were represented with all the fluids in the body obviously and pitta is the fire principle and water so there are different physical attributes to vata pitta and kapha people and to vata pitta and kapha vikruti which i'll talk about in a moment but i wanted to recap those for the people who are just coming on my name is darcy frankel i am a longtime ayurveda practitioner and a cleansing specialist i practice here on Kauai and virtually i have many different YouTube videos that you can go check out at my channel. I also have a cleansing program right now. It's free. I will post that on the banner so you can see my free um, cleansing program, which is right here. It's free right now. Seven beautiful days of cleansing and it's all the foundation is in Ayurvedic medicine. So before I go further, you can check out that uh, if you're interested and um, stay to the end. And I have another special offer for you. I will check to see if you have any questions or comments. Love your comments. Let's refresh. How do I find out about my constitution? Can I just read a book? Yes, you can read a book. Reading books are great. However, it's very easy to get confused and because we see through this lens of our Vikruti frequently. So sometimes it's really hard to know what our constitution is just through reading a book. So there's many ways you can find out what's happening inside your body. You can read a book. I highly recommend that you go to a qualified practitioner. I am open up right now for some consultations. And right now I am doing a having a special and I'm offering a free consult. So you could see right here where I'm offering a free consult. 
it's a limited time. So as soon as they're full, they will be closed. So I would snap that up if I was you. It's a free uh, initial 15 minute consultation where I answer a couple questions and help you get started on your health and well-being. It gives you a well-being tune-up or check-in. If you've had a consultation with me before, if you've never had a consultation, if you've done Panchakarma with me or seen me for any type of Ayurveda cleansing or have never seen me before, it's a great way to get to know me. So click below while supplies last because there's only so much in me to go around. <laughs> All right, so let me um, give a little recap of what we've been talking about here. I have my notes. I wanted to make sure to cover everything. So I talked a little bit about um, Ayurveda, introduced Ayurvedic medicine to you. The three goals are to prevent disease, to preserve health, and to promote longevity. And we do that in a myriad of ways by helping you to choose the foods that are really, really good for you avoid foods that do not serve you or create vikruti, um, as well as other types of impressions and practices. Uh, us Ayurveda practitioners help you come up with a whole lifestyle plan, which help you to increase your longevity, promote the health you have, and um, prevent disease. Some of the other Ayurveda modalities are Ayurveda body treatments. If you've ever done Pancha Karma with me, it's Ayurveda's cleansing and rejuvenation program. Uh, let's see. Then I talked about the five elements, space, air, fire, water, and earth. Ooh, look at that. I'm calling for a consult. Let me turn that off. <laughs> the five elements and how those come together to form the three doshas, Vata, Pitta, and Kapha. We are born into our beautiful, natural, peaceful, perfectly healthy constitution. And then we acquire vikruti, disorder or imbalance from there. And there are many ways to eliminate, decrease, take away these causative factors that have caused those um, vikruti, which will eventually, if left unchecked, result in disease, disorder, and imbalance. In Ayurveda, we learn how to prevent disease. We learn how to promote longevity and to preserve the health that we have. And there's many ways to do it. Today was just a brief introduction for you because people have been asking me right and left, tell me about this mysterious Ayurvedic medicine that you practice, Darcy. The ways that I practice are Sparshana, Darshana, and Prashna. In an Ayurveda consultation, I, when I see you in person, I feel your pulse. I ask questions. I observe using all of my senses, which I have been purifying for decades and decades. So it gives me this sort of Ayurvedic, super honed, spidey senses to tune into my clients and help them create a lifestyle that works for them. And uh, let's see. So that's one of the ways I do in-person and virtual consultations. I also help people. So I help people through online consultations um, and physical body treatments. You could come here to my beautiful day spa, Hanale Day Spa, and the Ayurveda Center to receive healing treatments such as an Ayurveda massage or Pancha Karma cleansing and rejuvenation program. And I also offer my online courses and cleanses virtually. So right now I have my free seven day course uh, and I will post that on the ticker. So right now, this is one of the offerings that I have. They're absolutely free is my free online course all about cleansing, fully connected, and um, the foundation is in Ayurvedic medicine. And in there, you do a sugar and gluten cleanse. It's a beautiful, beautiful first week um, of a uh, of program. And uh, let's see, what else can I offer you? The next thing that I have to offer you is I have two upcoming, I have two upcoming um 
webinars. And I will share that in the comments. The webinar is um, sunscreen, my sunscreen report, how sunscreen makes you sick, tired, and fat. And I'm putting the link for my upcoming um, event there. Aha! Event. I hope that shows my details. Let's see. Let's see, can you see that? There's the link. Yeah. Come on, put the link in there. All right, so there's that. And then um, I do have another, another webinar upcoming, um, and that is where I share my secrets of cleansing. Secrets of cleansing from a cleansing specialist. <laughs> I love the little... Um, infographic it shows me like telling secrets <laughs> let's find the link for you oh come on <laughs> let's see does this work oh here good this will take you to uh, my organizers here are the my webinars all right so i have two webinars one is called the um, Secrets of Cleansing, and that's happening, I believe, on the 22nd. And then the next one is my um, How Sunscreen Makes You Sick, Tired, and Fat. And in that webinar, I have my notes. In that webinar, I'm going to unpack the five reasons you need to avoid sunscreens. I'm going to talk about the role that the skin plays in acquiring toxins and releasing toxins, which comes from Ayurvedic medicine. So the five reasons to avoid sunscreen, hint, they make you sick, tired, and fat. And I will unpack those five reasons right here. <laughs> it's gonna be two awesome webinars, so come check that out. Lots of free stuff for you to get your health checkup. And um, I will take one more look to see if we have any questions, any comments, and then I will um, wrap this up. Oh my gosh, thank you for saying I'm beautiful. I'm blushing. It is a lovely subject. I love me some Ayurvedic medicine. What questions do you have? Okay, Monique Yugal, Jen Henderson, Cassie, Nancy, Come on, 30 seconds more. Share your questions. You have me here for free. Use me. <laughs> All right, I've given you a wrap up. I've shared with you what you can do, you know, what I'm up to now. And I'm stalling to see if anybody posts any more comments because I want to answer your questions. Um, nope, I don't see any more questions. Okay, well, there we have it. I'll go live again soon. Thank you so much for your time. Remember, come on over to Serious Cleanse and check out either that free consultation or my seven day. I'm looking forward to seeing you and hearing from you on the consultation, the course, or one of my upcoming webinars. There's lots to do for you to take care of your health right now. I urge you to do that. We have a great opportunity with lots of low cost and free offerings and time since most of us are in lockdown. Focus on the positives. All right, thank you for your time. If you find this of value, like, comment and share because that helps me too. We're creating an upward spiral of mutual generosity. As we say here, aloha. And as we say in Ayurveda, namaste. From the place in me that I know to be divine I honor that place in you that I know to be divine.